Jesus was praying alone. He often withdrew from the crowds and getting up sometimes long before the sun, at other times spending way into the night praying to his Father in the heavens. This constant conversation was his regular practice. And those close to him, why, they, they witnessed this and they desired to have that kind of prayer life too. It's not that they didn't know how to pray. I mean, they had learned since childhood from their parents. You know, all of the rope memory, memorized prayers you learn as a kid, the, the, the meal blessings, prayer time uh, at bed, and, and then, of course, the liturgies of worship. And who can help but the, uh, you know, the spontaneous yelps for help when they're in trouble and the, the praises and blessings of the good times. They knew how to pray. Everybody prays. But there was something about Jesus and his prayers. And they wanted it. And they came to Jesus and said, well, teach us to pray. You know, John's disciples, he taught them how to pray. So come on, what about us? You know, I just find it shocking and rather curious that Jesus did not already have a prayer program laid out for them. I mean, he's their religious teacher. He spends all day with them. And prayer is kind of like, you know, your basic 101 religious stuff. And yet, they didn't know. Of course, what follows, you know, wasn't this, you know canned program, okay, this is what you're going to say, and then say it this many times a day. And Oh no, not with Jesus. No, what you got with Jesus in teaching you how to pray was this beaming, proud son who said to anyone who would listen, here's my dad. Here's what he's like. Here's what he can do. Oh, I know there's good dads out there. They'd never think of giving their kid a, a snake if they'd asked for a fish. But even the very best parents, moms and dads alike, they pale in comparison to my Father in the heavens. And this, my dad, I am so confident in him. I'm so confident in his love and in his goodness. Here's what I'm going to challenge you to do. Oh, I hope you'll take me up on it. Ask him whatever you will. Seek him. You'll find him. Knock at the door. It will be open to you. Because everybody who asks him, everybody who seeks him, everybody who knocks at his door is welcomed and answered and received. Because that's the kind of father that I have. That's what he does. So, when you pray, say, Father. Now what this means is that you're not just a, a friend of a friend of the Father. Not really known, but just a loose acquaintance. You're not even just a friend of the Son of the Father, known by the family, but not family. Oh no, you, you yourself are a very child of the Father. And you're in the safety of the house already and, and even there put down for the night. And if there's a knock at the door at midnight, oh, don't you worry about getting up. Dad's going to do this. And you just stay right here. You're safe and you're warm. I'll take care of the door. Yeah. When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Now this hallowed word, like, what is that? But it means, Father, that you and your name be the very biggest thing in my life. Bigger than my job, than my own interests, bigger than my fears, bigger than my sins, 
bigger than any other relationship. Father, you and your name be the biggest thing so that your kingdom, uh, your, your will, which is the very best things in the world, love and goodness and justice and rightness, it would be done through me so that I look like one of your kids. Father, you feed us. Give us our daily bread. Give, give me my drinks and, and my food and my clothes. Open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Give us our food at the proper time, Father, because that's who you are. And we lift up our thanks to you. Father, forgive us our sins. I've not lived with you as the biggest thing. I've not lived as your child. But now on full display is what you've given to bring peace to our relationship. You, on full display is your son, your only begotten son there on the cross. So that all of my sins are truly forgiven now. Complete and utter forgiveness. And so Father... Give me a heart like yours so that I will be at peace with those who've sinned against me and I can release them too because with, without your power, without your leading, Father, I'll hold on to their offenses and I, I will hold that grudge and I can remember people who have offended me from childhood and I still think ill of them. But Father, you've come to work a new love in my heart. Give me a heart like your own. And Father, you know how easily I'm overwhelmed and overcome by the, the struggles and the temptations and the hardness of this life. Father, give me faith to truly believe that you are good all the time, no matter what I face, because I face some really bad stuff and it just seems like a wave that's going to take me away. And the temptations seem too strong and it's just too easy to give in. Father, give me faith to believe that you are good and that you are with me all the time and that you are for me and that no matter what I face, even death itself, that, that I live in an unshakable kingdom with you and I will see you face to face because that's the kind of father that you are. Oh man. And an amen means, yes, it means it's true. It means it's really going to happen. It means everything that you've just said is based upon the reality of God being who he is, your father, the very best father. If the relationship is big, deep, and intimate, then so is the prayer life. And there wells up within the heart this shameless audacity that just keeps asking and asking because, well, God has everything. Father, we need your help. Uh, Father, we, we need your mercy. Father, we need your forgiveness. Father, we need, we need Father. Father, you're so awesome. Father, thank you. Father, there's just this, this seeking and we find him. And, and there's this knocking and we find he's got the door open and the other hand going, come on in. If the relationship is this big and deep and intimate, well, you'll easily find yourself getting up long before the sun just to talk with him. And at other times, you're just going late into the night because, well, your whole life just revolves around Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and you're just constantly talking with Him all throughout the day. And, and nothing's too trivial. Nothing's off limits. Nothing but everything is bared before your Father. How 
in the world do you, tr do you teach that kind of prayer life? Well, obviously you don't, right? I mean, you can't. And that's why Jesus didn't have a prepared prayer class for his disciples. But what he did is he put this on big display and he lived this and he waited then for his disciples. And then when there was the question, well, how can we have that? He's ready to teach. You see, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives this kind of a gift of a heart of prayer. That's why Jesus said, you know, even you, though you're evil, you know how to give good gifts to your kids. How much more your Father in Heaven will give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Have you ever asked the Father for this measure of the Holy Spirit? Why not now? Have you ever asked the Father for a measure of the Holy Spirit for this kind of prayer? Why not now? You see where I'm going. Okay. Here isn't a message of, you know, a few more tips and tricks on prayer to make it work a little better for you. This isn't a message for the, to, to convince the skeptics about the power of prayer and the goodness of God. This is a message from Jesus for those who would see in his own life a prayer life that is desirable and you want it too. It's for anyone who says, Lord, teach me how to pray. And Jesus says, when you pray, say, Father. So on the way out today, take off the, the table, your take home. And what I encourage you to do, this is just a different translation. It takes out the thee and the thou of the Lord's Prayer. Put it in your own words as you're praying it. Stop on a petition. Maybe you're just going to focus in on the hour of the Our Father. And think of all the different people in your life that you're intercessing for. Maybe it's you're going through a very... You need the protection of God from the deliverance of evil. You're going through hard testing. You, the sins are weighing you down. Whatever it is, focus and spend time with your Father throughout the week. Asking that He give a measure of the Holy Spirit to be in this kind of prayer that is big and deep and intimate. Amen. I invite you to stand.